Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk to you about identifying variables in a scientific experiment and then graphing them. Now we know that we have our independent and our dependent variable and often what happens is it's difficult to identify which of those is which in an experiment. So I'm going to show you uh, a simple little way that I like to remember how to identify the independent and dependent variable. And it also helps with graphing because it shows you where to plot them, whether that be on the x-axis or the y-axis. Now, the way to remember them is something that I use called dry mix. A bit random, I know, but each of these stand for the terms that we need to remember. So the D here is for our dependent variable and the I is for our independent independent variable and how this works is our dependent variable in an experiment is the one that is our results it's the one that we don't know what the values are going to be before we actually complete the experiment and so the way that we remember that, the dependent variable is the result. So whatever it is that we're hoping to measure by completing the experiment, that's our dependent variable. And we don't know what those values are going to be before we begin. The independent variable, however, is the one that we have some control over. It's the one that we make our decisions about whether we're going to change it or manipulate it. And so the M stands for manipulate. It's the variable that we adjust and change to see how it affects the dependent variable. So the independent variable is the one that we manipulate and the dependent variable is the one that is the final result. Something for you to bear in mind is the independent variable is the one that you know the values because you decide what you're going to set them to. And the dependent variable is the one that you don't know what the values are going to be until you actually complete the experiment. If I was to give you an example, perhaps we're testing the effect of temperature on the activity of an enzyme. So there are two variables there temperature and the activity of an enzyme. Which one of those do we know we're going to control and manipulate before the experiment? Have a think about it. It's the temperature. So the temperature is the thing that we will manipulate. It's the independent variable. And the activity of the enzyme is what we don't know until we actually complete the experiment. So the activity of an enzyme will be the dependent variable. That's our result. So that's how dry mix helps you with identifying variables. But the cool thing is that dry mix also helps you with working out where to put them on a graph. Now we know with a graph, we have two sets of axes. We have our y and our x. And when we're graphing in a scientific experiment, it's really important that we put the right variable on the right axis. And dry mix helps us to work that out. The dependent variable always goes on the y axis. And the independent variable always goes on the x-axis. So if you remember that using dry mix, you will make sure that you can always identify in your experiment which is the dependent variable, which is the independent variable, and then you'll be able to work out which axes to put them on when you're plotting the graph. You'll put the dependent on the y, and you'll always put the independent on the X. Of course, the next thing we want to look at is how we plot our graphs correctly by looking at now that we've correctly 
labeled the axes, we want to sort out our scale and we want to work out how we plot our points correctly. We want to look at drawing a line of best fit, but we'll tackle that in another video. So thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.